Hi, everyone. We'll get started in just a moment. Um, before we get started right at the top of the hour, I just want to make sure that everybody who's here right now can hear me and see my screen. You should see the cover slide that says Giving Day Strategy. Um, so if you could all just let me know um, that you can see me and hear or see my screen and hear me speaking um, in the Q&A box, that would be a huge um, help to me. Okay, perfect. Um, we've got just another minute. So I'm just going to put myself on mute for a second. Um, and then we uh, will go ahead and get started. Thank you guys for letting me know um, that you could hear me and see me. Um, and we'll just get started in a few moments. All right, so welcome everybody. This is our second webinar uh, for Give 828, and this one is all about Giving Day strategy. Uh, my name is Linda Gerhardt, and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. Um, and I've been working with the Young Black and Giving Back team uh, for, I think this is our third year on this uh, fantastic event. Um, and I'm going to be doing the majority of the speaking on this uh, presentation, but I'm also joined by Nema and Siobhan from Young Black and Giving Back Institute, um, who will be here to answer um, any of your questions during the Q&A portion of this webinar. Um, so today's agenda, we have a lot of content to get through, um, but we're going to go through Giving Day Basics, just in case you need a refresher. Um, then we're going to really talk about strategy, some, some tools that you can use on the Mighty Cause platform to boost your campaign. And this is really exciting. We're also going to announce prizes and talk about how you can win the prizes that are available on uh, August 28th. Um, and we're also going to go into campaign marketing. Um, and then we're going to do a live Q&A at the end. Um, I like to power through all of the slides first. So if you have something that you'd like to ask while I'm speaking, uh, just go ahead and put that into the Q&A box. And we'll make sure that uh, Siobhan, Nema, and I get to it at the end of the presentation. All right, so before we fully dive in, um, I just wanted to quickly go through some of the Give 828 basics, just in case you missed the first webinar or you needed a refresher or this is, you just got registered for the event. So we're just gonna go through some of the basics for the event first. So Give 828 is hosted by Young Black and Giving Back Institute. And uh, this is the event's third year on the Mighty Cause platform. I believe there was one event um, before uh, switching to Mighty Cause. Um, and Give 828 builds on the momentum of Black Philanthropy Month. And there's a lot of great information about the significance of August 28th. That's available at give828.org. Um, the big day is on Saturday, August 28th. And the event goes from 8 AM to 11 PM. Um, there is an opportunity to get some donations before the event itself to help you build momentum for your campaign. And that early giving period starts on August 14th. Um, to participate in the event on Mighty Cause and be eligible to win some of the amazing prizes we're going to talk about, uh, you will need to register your nonprofit for the event. Um, so if you haven't already done that, make sure that you go to give828.org, click the register button and complete your registration. Um, and I know Nima and Siobhan are are really working hard to power through um, some of the pending registrations that are there. So if you're still waiting on a response, um, just be patient. Um, but you need to register for the event to be eligible for prizes. So if you have not done that, that is the first step to participating. On Mighty Cause, every nonprofit has an organization profile, and that profile acts as a year-round fundraising portal. And it's also the page that most nonprofits use to participate in Give 828. Um, it's designed to be easy to navigate, but once you're set up on Mighty Cause, you'll want to take a little bit of time to explore all the tools that Mighty Cause has available to you 
through your admin dashboard on your organization's profile. Um, you have an overview screen where you can choose any metrics that you'd like to track. We also just have some basic information there. Um, so for instance, you'll also be able to see if your registration is pending, approved, um, and you'll be able to check on your status through your overview screen on your organization profile. Um, and we also have fundraising tools, which are uh, under fundraising. And so you'll find all of your fundraising tools that you'll want to use for this event. And we're going to talk about today in this webinar under fundraising, such as matching grants, which we're going to spend a bit of time talking about on the webinar today. And you can also do really cool things like customize your checkout flow so that you can sort of have some control over the process of completing the donation transaction. Um, so there's quite a bit there. So take some time to see what's available to you and get comfortable with your dashboard. Um, on Mighty Cause, uh, the donor data belongs to your nonprofit, and we provide a lot of reporting that you can use under reports. Um, this is where you'll go if you want to see a live feed of your donations, find a specific donation, or download a spreadsheet with all of the details ab about your donations. Um, you can also find a donor retention report there, which is really handy if you've participated in Give 828 in the past. You can find a list of people who've either given before or haven't given before. Both options are available to you so that you can plan some outreach uh, that's related to retaining donors who've given in previous years. Um, and then you also have settings, um, which is a little bit dry and boring, but this is where you can add admins to your organization profile so that they can access your report and edit your page. Um, you can manage your organization's information if any of that's changed since you were last on the platform. And you can also set up EFT so that you can get your disbursements um, directly in your bank account. That's a little bit quicker and more efficient than paper checks. So if you haven't set up EFT, we definitely recommend doing that in your settings. Uh, one of the main things you'll want to do before August 28th is customize your profile. Um, your profile is basically the face of your organization on Mighty Cause during the Give 828 event. So you'll want to make sure that it represents you well. Um, you can customize the look and feel of your page, update your logo, uh, create or edit your story to appeal to donors, and create a page that really tells the story of who your nonprofit is, what you're all about, and what you do in the world. Um, there is a to-do list, which which is basically five items. Um, you can access this through your overview screen. And these five items are things that we recommend you complete before the event. Um, basically, these five things, um, with the exception of EFT, which is really for your own convenience, um, will make sure that your page looks like you've shown it some love. And that will make donors more likely to feel comfortable giving to your nonprofit. Um, if you missed our first webinar, the recording um, is available on the Give 828 site, that's give828.org. Um, and that's a really great place to start if you're looking for some technical information about how to customize your profile and get it ready for the big day. Um, that was the majority of that webinar. We did go into some other things. But if you're like, I don't know how to use this platform, that is the place to start. Um, go to give828.org and then just click on resources and then training webinars and you can access the recording there. All right, so now we're going to get into the real meat of this webinar, which is fundraising strategy. So one of the things that's really helpful to know when you're planning a campaign is how your donors tend to give. And on Mighty Cause, we have a lot of ways that we track activity from donors and gather information about what they're doing, where they're coming from, and so on. Um, one of the big things to know is that the vast majority of traffic from last year's Give 828 event and the year before that is that they came from direct sources, according to Google. And that can mean a couple of different things. So typically, Typically, it means that people are either typing in a URL in their browser, they're following a bookmarked page, and it can also mean that someone followed a link that was not tracked by Google um, in order to end up on the Give 828 site. So we'll also, we also see a lot of email traffic in that direct category, according to Google Analytics. So emails to donors 
are a huge source of traffic on their own. We can see that MailChimp and Constant Contact are really big sources of donor traffic for Give 828. Um, and that's also included in the direct category. So email strategy should be a big part of your fundraising plan. Um, there is a lot of traffic that comes from social media, but it's a distant second. Uh, most of the people who come to the Give 828 site and visit nonprofit profiles during Give 828 get there through a link that the nonprofit provided in an email. So that's really important to know going into this is that that is how most people will end up on your profile and make a donation. Um, something that I personally think is really interesting about Give 828 as an event is that most donors tend to give via mobile devices. So 63.4% of donors give from a mobile device. So that includes a smartphone, a tablet, um, and that is higher than most giving events on Mighty Cause where we tend to see more of a 50-50 split between mobile and desktop. Um, so for this event, only 36% of donors gave via desktop computer. Um, which is really important to know because you want to make sure that everything that you do marketing wise is optimized for mobile. The average donation was 76.06, um, which is kind of a big number and it's an average. So uh, there is obviously some variance. So there's some big donations and some small, small donations, but the average was $76.06 and, um, and about 92 donors opted to cover fees for the nonprofit that they were making their donation to. Um, so Give 828 donors are extremely generous and they were happy to cover the cost of any fees associated with the transaction. So what does that all mean altogether? Um, well, since most of your donors are following links and emails, as I mentioned before, you'll want to make emailing your donors a priority and market directly to your supporters. Um, some donors do end up finding nonprofits to donate to through the Give 828 search, um, but the vast majority of donors give because the nonprofit asks them to and sends them a link and tells them this is where you can donate. Um, you'll wanna make sure that all of your marketing is mobile friendly. So when you're customizing your org profile, take a look on your phone and just make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Um, Mighty, Mighty Cause as a platform is designed mobile first, meaning that we design it to be friendly for mobile devices first and desktop second. Um, but you have some you know, things that you can add like a banner to your profile and you just want to make sure that that looks the way you want it to on mobile and you also want to test out any emails that you send on a mobile device as well um, personally i like to test on both an android and an iphone just to make sure um, that i understand how it looks on both devices if you send an email that's hard to read on a phone, especially with this percentage of donors who tend to give via mobile device, you might actually lose a donor if they open up your email and they can't easily read it. So you wanna make sure that any marketing uh, emails that you send out look good on mobile. Um, and there's always some concern about fees because nobody likes fees. Nobody ever in life wants to pay a fee. Um, on Mighty Cause, there is a 29, percent plus 30 cent transaction fee that is imposed by credit card companies and we worked with the YBGB team to provide a discounted platform fee of three percent um, but overwhelmingly donors are happy to cover these fees for you and the full amount of their donation including the covered fees is tax deductible for them. They get a receipt for that full amount. Um, so don't be afraid to give your donors a reminder that it can help you out and ensure that you'll see 100% of their donation if they choose to cover fees. Um, for most donors, it ends up being a really small amount. Uh, for the average donation of $76, that ends up being just about $4 in fees. So for people giving in the, say, $5 to $25 range, it's really not that much at all, and most donors are more than happy to do it. Um, and the most important lesson from all of this data is that fundraising for Give 828 is proactive. Um, if you want to make the most of the event and raise lots of money for your cause, you'll want to create a fundraising plan and be strategic about reaching out to your supporters because that's what gets donors to your page and gets them to make a donation. It's not a passive event. Um, you might get one or two donors passively if you're lucky, um, but you'll want to make a plan to actively solicit donations to raise lots of money and win prizes for your nonprofit. 
Um, as I mentioned before, you do have an early giving period that's available to you. And this is something that will boost the amount that you can raise for Give 828 is taking advantage of this early giving period. When you get some early donations, you basically just get a running start. And one of the paradoxical things about donors that we see across the nonprofit sector is that they are more likely to give when they see that other people have already given. So when you have a little bit of money in the bank, it's easier to get more from donors. Um, so it's a good idea to think about getting some seed donations when early giving opens on August 14th. All of these donations count towards your event total starting on August 14th. And I just want to note here that these are not pledges that will process on the 28th. These are real-time donations that process immediately, and they just count towards your Give 828 totals. So asking your board, your volunteers, any staff you have, and so on to make early gifts will help you get a little bit of money in the bank and help you start the day strong. Um, another strategic way to raise more money during Give 828 is having a matching grant. Um, so what is a matching grant? Um, a matching grant is a larger donation that your nonprofit leverages to bring in other donations. So for instance, if you have a donor that you know is going to make a $1,000 gift for your Give 828 campaign, instead of just accepting that gift on its own as a $1,000 donation, you can actually take that gift and turn it into a match so that every gift that's given during the time period that you specify for the match matching grant um, is matched. So everyone loves a good deal. And what a match does is it gets donors interested and motivated to give now, which is really the hard thing about soliciting donations, because a match means that they're going to be able to make their donation to your nonprofit go a little bit further. So with a one-to-one -one match, um, which is the most common type of matching grant we see on Mighty Cause, a gift from a donor of $25 becomes $50 with the additional $25 $5 coming out of that $1,000 grant that your donor provided. Now, it really doesn't have to be a huge amount. You can get creative with getting a matching grant together. Um, if you have a $500 gift coming or you want to pull together some gifts from your board of directors or volunteers or your staff, you can use that. You can pull that money together and use a smaller match during a power hour, for instance, which we're going to talk about in a minute, and to help you win prizes. So you can strategically use matching grants to get an advantage and win prizes, or you can just have a larger grant that plays out during the course of the day that incentivizes people to give. So getting a matching grant is honestly just like securing any other major gift for your nonprofit. You'll want to start by prospecting or making a list of people and organizations and companies that are in your nonprofit's inner circle with a history of giving in larger amounts. Um, this is not something that you generally want to do cold. Um, you want to, one of the things that makes somebody more likely to give a matching grant is a propensity to give and a history of giving. Um, but it can be a really great way to break the ice with a company or a local business that you've been wanting to get to collaborate with for fundraising purposes. Um, so some great places to start um, prospecting for a, made, for a matching grant would be your board of directors, um, any major gift donors that you have, um, any corporate sponsors or local businesses you work with, um, basically anybody who has the capacity to give a larger amount and has a history of doing so. Then you'll want to start reaching out to check in with them, see how they're doing, get a feel for what's going on with them, and see if they might be warm to giving a larger gift, and then talk to them about your Give 828 plans. Um, explain what the event is, explain what you've got planned for the event, um, and just talk to them about your campaign. And then if they seem warm, if things seem to be going okay, obviously if you contact a donor and they are not responsive, or if you contact a business and they've been shut down because because of COVID, it's not a great indication that they'll be likely to give. But if somebody seems like they're in a pretty good position to give, you would just want to make your ask. Um, 
And you can explain to them how matching grants will help them make a bigger difference with their donation and inspire others to give and how it could help you win prizes for your nonprofit. Um, so something that's interesting about major donors um, is that they can get a little bit bored just cutting checks. So this actually gives them an opportunity to get engaged with your nonprofit in a new and fun and interesting way and inspire other people to give. So in addition to making the donors donations for $20, $25, $30, and so on um, count for more, it also allows your, your grantor, your larger donor, to make a bigger difference with their donation, which they enjoy and it keeps them engaged. Um, you'll want to start this process as soon as possible if you'd like to get a matching grant because it is a conversation. Sometimes people are not super responsive to emails and you may need to have some back and forth. Um, so getting started early to secure a matching grant is always a good thing. Um, and it's always good to leave things a little bit open and just sort of feel things out with the prospect the prospective donor um, they may not be in a position to give a thousand dollars but maybe they can do five hundred dollars and you can still work with that so have a conversation with any prospective donors who might provide a matching grant and just see where the conversation goes because in most cases you can do something um, with an amount that they're able to give that will help you um, during give 828 Mighty Cause has a tool where you can enter your match and not only will the platform do the math for you, which is a huge benefit, um, it'll also help you market it in some key areas of your Mighty Cause page. Um, when you have a matching grant that's active, um, you'll see a sticker added to your donate button and it'll list it on your organization profile and you'll also be included in a search on the Give 828 site where people can find organizations that have matching funds avail available. A lot of donors are very savvy and they want to make sure that they're contributing to organizations that have matches available so that they can make their funds go further. So it's always a good thing to be included in that search if you have a donor who's looking to give and they want to make their donation go further. Um, and you just enter this into the tool. It's really just plug and play. You can schedule things in advance. You can schedule multiple matching grants and so on and so forth. So it's a very easy to use tool um, and it'll do a lot of things for you on your site. Um, um, you have some options to add a logo, you can shout out the donor, um, and you can also keep it anonymous if you have a donor who prefers not to have their name out there. Um, and you'll also want to promote your matching grant to your donors through your own channels um, to get them excited about it, because the matching grant is basically a marketing tool. It's a really savvy marketing tool that you can use to inspire donors to give. So include it in your campaign promotions, on social media and let your supporters know when it goes live so that they can plan their gifts so that they can take advantage of the matching grant. Um, you can schedule multiple grants, as I mentioned, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. A one-to-one -one match is not the only thing that you can do. Um, you can do a threshold match. Uh, you can cap matches at a certain amount so that you don't have a match that runs out. Um, so again, there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Get in there and check out the tool if you'd like to uh, think about getting a matching grant for Give828. Um, and a consistent pattern that we see across all giving events on Mighty Cause is that when a nonprofit it uses a matching grant, they tend to raise more money overall. Another strategy to raise more money for Give828 is peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. Um, if you're not familiar with the term peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, peer-to-peer um, -peer is when a supporter of your nonprofit creates a fundraiser for your nonprofit and asks their social network or their peers, which is where peer to peer comes from, to make a donation. Um, this is a tried and true fundraising technique. And it's actually one of the things that the Mighty Cause platform was built to facilitate. Uh, anyone in your nonprofit's inner circle is an appropriate peer to peer fundraiser. So your board members, volunteers, staff, uh, program alumni, these are all great people to tap to be peer to peer fundraisers. Um, what peer to peer does is it increases your footprint and your reach on the giving event, um, allowing your campaign message to be heard by people who may not be directly connected to or involved with your nonprofit. Um, so that's one of the main benefits of it is that if I start a fundraiser for your nonprofit, you have access to all of my friends and colleagues and family, whereas otherwise you wouldn't have any way to get in touch with them because you can't solicit people who don't have a connection to your nonprofit, generally speaking. Um, 
And another reason that it's a popular fundraising technique is because it allows your supporters to tell their story and talk to people about why they care about your cause. Um, one of the top reasons that people make their first donation to a nonprofit is because they, someone that they know in their personal lives asks them to make a donation. Um, so peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers are actually, interestingly, a little bit better than nonprofits at getting people to make their first donation because it's somebody that they know and trust that's asking them to support your nonprofit and people are much more likely to support individuals they know rather than an organization or an institution. Um, you can also ask people on social media or through an email blast to start a fundraiser for you. A lot of people are really happy to do this, particularly if they don't have a lot of money to give. This is a way that people, especially who are younger and may not have the resources to give a lot of their own money to your nonprofit can still get Get involved and make a difference for your nonprofit. So that's a great way for people to get involved in a different way um, other than just making a donation. Um, and starting a peer-to-peer -peer campaign is really easy. All they need to do is go to your organization profile on Mighty Cause and click the button that says fundraise, which is right next to your donate button. And we actually guide them through the rest of the process. So it's very easy to do. Anybody can do it. You don't need any particular skill level. Um, and it's a lot of, um, it's, it's a great opportunity for your donors to get involved and help you in a new and interesting fun way. All right, so uh, Give828 has a ton of prizes to give out, and they are actually uh, up today on the Give828 site, give828.org. Um, there are $11,500 in prizes available, which is a really good amount of money. Um, so I wanted to go through what those prizes are and how you can win them um, so that you can come up with a strategy to um, try to win some prizes for your nonprofit. So first, it's important to understand the different types of prizes that are available. Um, for Give 828, everyone, um, every participating nonprofit is sorted into a leaderboard that will determine what 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 prizes they are eligible for. Um, there is no prize for simply topping the leaderboard, but you'll see rankings on the live Give 828 site where you can so you can see where you stand compared to other nonprofits. Um, knowing which leaderboards you're on is important because it'll determine which prizes you are eligible to win. Um, the two basic types of prizes available to win for Give 828 are power hours and golden tickets. And these are both hourly prizes. So they're sort of mini competitions within the event. Um, power hours are competitive, meaning that you're competing against other orgs for the prize. Um, some power hours are won by raising the most um, dollars in the space of the hour, and some are won by bringing in the most individual donors. Um, golden tickets are randomly chosen, so they're hourly prizes that are not competitive. They are randomly chosen. So here are the prize groupings or the leaderboards for Give 828. Um, the first is for Maryland nonprofits only, sponsored by the University of Maryland's Do Good Institute. They have $2,500 in prizes available, and any nonprofits who indicated on their registration form that they had an address in Maryland um, are eligible to win prizes sponsored by the Do Good Institute. Um, next, there's the National Partnership for Women and Families, and they also provided $2,500 dollars in prizes. So nonprofits who are eligible for these prizes are organizations who do work in the arena of Black maternal health and reproductive health. When you register, um, if you've already registered, you've seen that there is a question that asks you to specify whether your organization does that type of work. Um, and nonprofits are placed into this leaderboard and this prize pool based on the information that was provided to us in the registration form. Um, there's also a leaderboard and prizes available for Colorado-based nonprofits, um, and that there is uh, $1,500 in prizes available from CNRG Accounting. I'm actually not sure if that's Synergy Accounting, but it's CNRG Accounting, um, and that is open to any nonprofits that are based in Colorado. Um, and last but not least, uh, YBG Bay is sponsoring a leaderboard where all registered nonprofits are eligible to win prizes. 
So I believe there is at least one prize being given away uh, for almost every hour of the event. So it's a very long list. Um, we've tried to make it as easy as possible for you. There's a schedule of all the prizes by hour um, at give828.org. Just uh, go to give828.org and click on the link in the navigation bar that says rules and prizes, and you'll see the full breakdown by hour. It explains how much is at stake, what kind of prize it is, and who is eligible for it. So that's that's really the place you want to go um, if you are looking to see precisely what the prize schedule is. Um, I just didn't think it would be super helpful to go through uh, all those prizes because there are a lot. So you really just want to take a look at the prize schedule and break down on the rules and prizes page. And when you're planning for your campaign, you'll really want to make sure that you understand which prizes you are eligible for, which leaderboards you're included on, and which hours you have an opportunity to win prizes, because that's going to impact your strategy when you'll send emails, when you're going to post on social media, and so on and so forth. So a lot of the prizes that are available are called power hours. And I just wanted to chat about how power hours work and how you can strategize to win one. Uh, a power hour is a, an hour long fundraising sprint where you're competing against all of the other eligible nonprofits to achieve a specific goal. Either raise the most dollars in the space of the hour or bring in the most unique, the most, the highest number of unique donors. Um, on the prize schedule, you'll see what type of power hour it is listed. Um, most nonprofits are not able to win a power hour by accident. So you really want to plan to send out emails, post on social media, and alert your supporters when a power hour is starting so they can help you win prize money. Um, the time limit here usually works to your advantage um, and inspires people to drop what they're doing and give now because if they say, ah, I'll give later, they won't be able to help you win. So the urgency helps you drive donors to make a donation to your page um, so that they can't put it off, they can't ignore the email. If they want to help you win the prize, they have to give now. So depending on the type of power hour, hour you'll want to change up your strategy. For most dollars raised power hours, where you're looking for a high number in dollars, coordinating larger gifts is often how nonprofits win. So for instance, if you know that your board chair is going to make a big gift for, to your Give 828 campaign, um, encouraging them and working with them ahead of time to make it during a power hour that you're trying to win can really take you across the finish line and help you win that prize money for your nonprofit. For most unique donor power hours, what you're looking for is not the amount that you raise, but the donation volume. You want a lot of individual donations. Um, you're just trying to bring in the highest number of individual donors. Uh, so for instance, an organization during a most unique donors power hour could raise far and away the most amount of money, but if that's only from a smaller number of donors, an organization that raises half that much from a larger number of donors can win that power hour. So you're looking for a donation volume, and um, that's important to keep in mind because the platform minimum on Mighty Cause is $5. So $5 is the minimum donation and asking for a small donation in an email blaster on social media is a really fantastic way to win. And it's also a really great way to get people to give more than once. Uh, so even if somebody has given to you previous, previously, a lot of donors are perfectly willing to go back and give you another five bucks so that you have a chance to win that prize. Um, so don't think that they all need to be new to your organization. They can give earlier in the day. They just need to be unique within the space of that hour. Um, if you have staff or volunteers, um, rallying them together to make small gifts during a most unique donors power hour can help you win. And matching grants are an excellent way to give donors an extra push to donate during a power hour that you're trying to win. It is completely within the space of the rules to have a power hour that you've strategized to win and also have a matching grant that's active during that power hour. So a lot of nonprofits that do really well during power hours have multiple things that they're doing to strategize to give them an edge to win that power hour money. Now, one thing that I do want to clarify is how we count unique donors. Um, there are a few different things that we look at on the back end of Mighty Cause to determine who is an individual donor. Um, 
that donors only need to be unique within that hour. So even if you make a donation to your own organizations earlier in the day, you can make an, a donation again during the power hour and you'll be counted as a unique donor. Um, but if you give twice during that hour, you're still just one donor. Um, so most attempts to game the system by creating dummy email addresses or getting a lot of people to um, make donations that are not actually individuals. So like having one person make multiple donations, they'll actually tend to get you caught in our security filters. Um, and we can see the, the details of each transaction on the platform side. Um, so you really could uh, hurt yourself by trying to game the system. We really recommend trying to stick to getting just a lot of your donors and rallying support from your supporters to win a most unique donors power hour, because we can usually see it on our end if somebody is trying to game the system. Um, but basically, each individual, each person who gives during that hour is counted as one person. So it's one literal actual person, and that's what you would want to consider a unique donor. So golden tickets are randomly chosen prizes. Um, how they work is that our system takes every donation made to an eligible nonprofit during a golden ticket hour and chooses a winner at random. Um, when a donation is made to your organization um, and it's chosen for a golden ticket, you get a prize on top of the amount of the donation. So if your friend Sally donates $5 and that donation is chosen for a golden ticket, then you get the $5 and you also win a prize on top of that. Um, you'll also see the name of the donor who made the winning donation on the live site. So it's a really great opportunity to reach out and thank the donor for helping you win. Um, golden tickets operate very much like a raffle. So the more donations you get during the hour, the more chances you have to win. Um, golden tickets are really and truly random. So the only real strategy is to make sure that you get donations during your golden ticket hours. Um, there are a couple of very high value golden ticket hours for Give 828. Um, if you don't get any donations during that hour, unfortunately, you can't be pulled to win a golden ticket. So it's not all of the participating nonprofits who are eligible during the golden ticket hour. It is all of the donations that are made during that golden ticket hour. Um, and the more donations you get, the more chances you have to win. So that's the basic strategy is make sure that you're getting donations during the golden ticket hour. So before we move on, I did want to go over some facts about prizes for Give 828. Um, first and foremost, only donations that are made on the Mighty Cause platform are eligible to win donations. Um, now, as a nonprofit, you can certainly add any donations that are made outside of Mighty Cause, either through another platform or by cash or check um, to your Mighty Cause page, just to reflect the total amount of, donation, of donations that you've received for your Give 828 campaign. But unfortunately, those don't count for prizes. They do need to be made through the Mighty Cause platform because we're pulling them from a list of transactions, basically. So if it doesn't come through Mighty Cause, we can't count it toward a prize. Um, so if you want to win prizes, you will want to direct your donors to give through the 828 site. Uh, nonprofits may be eligible for more than one leaderboard. In fact, many people will be in more than one leaderboard. So for instance, a nonprofit that's based in Maryland and focused on uh, Black maternal health would be eligible for the Do Good Institute leaderboard, the Women and Families leaderboard, and the YBGB leaderboard. So they have a lot of chances to win. So it's important to understand which leaderboards you're on and which prizes your nonprofit is eligible for and then refer back to that schedule on give828.org. Um, there are a lot of them and I really just didn't think that rattling off the full prize schedule would be particularly helpful because who on earth can remember all of that? So please just refer to that to see the full breakdown of all the prizes and when they're happening and who is eligible. And to see if you want, you'll want to check in at give828.org on the event day itself. Um, it usually takes five to 10 minutes for our system to pull the winner and post it to the homepage on the uh, giving day site. So if you're participating in an 11 a.m. power hour, for instance, you'd want to check give828.org on August 28th, about five or 10 minutes after 12 p.m. to see the winner. So the hour, if it goes from 11 to 12, you want to check in around 12.05 or 12.10 to see if you've won the page or won the prize rather. All right, so we are in the home stretch. And before we dive into questions, I do want to go through some marketing tips for your Give 828 campaign. 
So first and foremost, I do want to mention that the uh, YBGB team has created a fantastic toolkit for your nonprofits. That is an excellent resource that you can use as you're getting ready for your campaign. There's a lot of information in there. Um, they actually also have a dedicated social media um, toolkit that you can take a look at. There's graphics that you can use for your marketing efforts, and it was made specifically by the Give8 28 team for your nonprofits. Um, you can also view past trainings and review FAQs on the Give828 site. Um, but what I really recommend is taking uh, advantage of all the great resources that the team has put together for you on the giving event site. So if you haven't checked those out, make sure that you go to give828.org and take a look at the uh, toolkit materials and the graphics so that you have every, um, every resource available to you as you plan for your campaign. So as I mentioned before, email is going to be a really important part of doing well on the Give 828 campaign. Um, some tips for sending a good giving day email. Um, you want to keep it short, sweet, and simple. Um, people on the internet especially have a very short attention span, and they tend to skim. So if you put together a, a long, long email, most people are not going to read every word of that, they're going to skim through for the important points. So you want to make sure that you have a, an email that's easy for them to understand. Um, even if they don't read it word for word, you want to keep it short and sweet and make sure that it's clear what you would like them to do. Um, one thing that we do recommend is segmenting your audiences. And basically what segmentation is in terms of email marketing is you have your full list of all of your email subscribers, right? You have this big list of everyone all together. When you segment, you're taking that big list and you're whittling it down to groups that are based on affinity or ways in which they're alike. Um, so for instance, people who have a recurring donations set up for you at your organization could be one segment. Um, people who give under $25 might be a different segment. Uh, your board members might be a segment. Your volunteers might be a segment. There's a lot of things that you can do to sort of see who is worth reaching out to specifically because people tend to be more responsive to emails that feel like they are written more specifically to them. And of course, you don't want to send an email to a major donor asking them for $5 outside of a, of a most unique donor hour because that doesn't make sense for them. Uh, so if you can segment, um, it's definitely helpful um, during the giving event just so that you can talk more specifically to who your donors are and the relationship that they have with your nonprofit. Uh, most email marketing programs like uh, MailChimp make this really easy to do. Constant content tact I think makes it a little bit more complicated, but it's possible to do with all of the major email marketing programs that are out there. Um, you want to pay close attention to your schedule and timing and make sure that you're sending out emails at the correct times. Um, so for instance, if you have a power hour coming up that you're really gunning to win, um, you want to make sure that you have an email going out uh, that announces that power hour at the start of the hour so people can have time to go make their donation and help you out during that hour. Um, and since there are a lot of time sensitive hourly prizes, you may actually just want to make a spreadsheet or write down when you plan to send out emails to your list, or if you plan to target certain segments for emails. As I mentioned before, make it mobile friendly. Give 828 donors like to give on their phones. Um, so make sure that your emails are mobile friendly. Uh, most email marketing programs only use mobile friendly templates, but I still see ones come into my own personal email that are not formatted for mobile. And if people can't read your email, they, will, they won't read it. They'll just get rid of it and they'll get out of it. So make sure that you are choosing a mobile friendly template to build your email from and test it on phones. Like actually look at it on your phone and make sure that it looks good. Cause sometimes, sometimes goofy things can happen um, in translation. <laughs> particularly using certain apps if you look at the email in a, in a particular app. So it's always good to actually look at it on a phone, not just the preview that's available for mobile on your desktop. Make sure that it looks good and on a real phone. Um, A-B testing is something that you might want to consider, especially leading up to the event. Um, so A-B testing is basically 
your variable testing. So if you want to find out which subject line is most effective leading up to your event, you might try a couple, you might split um, your email into two different groups. Group A gets this subject line and group B gets this subject line. And then you can check your open rates and see how many people clicked on it to see whether or not um, either strategy was more effective. Um, and you just want to make be clear about what you're testing. Uh, so for instance, something that's really fun to test is whether or not an emoji in your subject line makes people more likely to click on it. Overall, that does make people more likely to click on emails, funnily enough. Um, but you can test a certain variable and make and that way when you get to the actual event day, your emails are strong and you know what will make people open them. Um, and then finally, you just want to make sure that you're making a clear ask. Um, as I mentioned, people have very short attention spans they tend to skim emails rather than read them word for word. So you want to make sure that it's clear to donors what you're asking them to do, that you're providing a link where they can just follow it and complete their donation. Um, and that you don't want to use language like uh, please give or thank you for your support. They haven't given yet. So you want to be very clear, give now, donate now, donate today, et cetera, just so that you're giving them a clear call to action rather than thanking them for something that they haven't, or haven't done already. So social media is um, part of Give 828 strategy. It's definitely um, a, a source for donors to come to your page and make a donation. Um, my biggest recommendation is to be smart with your time and post where your audience is. So if you have a ton of Facebook followers, concentrate on Facebook. If Twitter is where you have a lot of followers and tend to get a lot of interaction, spend most of your time planning a Twitter strategy. Um, anything that you can do to schedule posts ahead of time is really helpful to you because giving days can be a little bit hectic. You're, you have a lot going on. You're monitoring your campaign. You're monitoring your donors. You're sending out emails. So you want to make sure that anything that you can schedule ahead of time, you do schedule ahead of time. Um, and save the day of posting for interactions, um, you know, updates on how your fundraising is going, thanking donors, and so on and so forth. So if you have a campaign video or some images that you want to share or you want to plan ahead to get your posts up at the beginning of power hours, that's a really great strategy to be smart about your time and make sure that the giving event is manageable and you're not spending a lot of time being sucked into social media on the giving event. You want to schedule everything you can. Um, something that can be helpful, it's not required, um, is boosting posts on social media, particularly Facebook. Um, because of Facebook's algorithms, if you're a big Facebook user, you may not see a post from an organization in your feed when it's posted. You may see it several days afterward. Um, but if you budget for boosted posts, um, and it doesn't have to be much, like 10 or $20 can be a decent boost uh, as long as you target it correctly. Um, that's something to consider leading up to the event. If you really want to use um, a platform like Twitter or Instagram, you can always consider placing an ad. Um, using content that is built to, to engage people on social media is a smart strategy. Um, I always recommend pouring your efforts into things that you can use in multiple different places. So photos, graphics, campaign videos, stories, those are things that are really going to work well on social media, particularly videos. And videos and infographics and things along those lines, you can use in different places. You can use them in an email. You can post them to your story on your organization profile. So definitely um, check, uh, just make sure that you're creating content that will serve you well and is built for social media. Um, and then also check their social media guide on give828.org. Check out that fantastic resource that the team has put together. They spent a lot of time and put a lot of love into it. So make sure that you're using that as you're getting your social media strategy together. So if you've participated in Give 828 in the past, um, one thing that I hope you're going to do this year and I highly recommend you do is focus on donor retention. Um, across the board, on the, in the nonprofit sector, donor retention is not great. It's usually under 50%. Um, and that negates a lot of the gains that nonprofits make. So you may get 100 new donors for Give 828, and that's fantastic. But if there are more donors that you failed to bring back, that kind of negates the new donors. So 
old donors who've given in the past, you know that they support you, that you know that they have a propensity to give because they already have. They are low hanging fruit. So make sure that you have a plan to retain donors who've given to your organization in the past, either for Give 828 or past campaigns. Um, now on Mighty Cause, we do actually have a report that's available to you. I was mentioning that earlier. So under reports, um, you go to retention um, and then you can check, you can actually just pull a list of everybody who gave last year who has not given this year. Um, you can also pull a list of people who have given um, if you want to email them specifically. So there's two ways you can do it. Um, but basically what you want to do is mention that they've given in the past that you know that you can count on them um, and maybe talk about the things that you were able to achieve with their help when they made donations in years past. Um, and basically acknowledging the relationship that you have, that they have with your nonprofit already. Um, another smart strategy, if you want to increase the amount that you raise overall is working with them to increase their gift from last year. So if last year somebody gave $25, why not ask them for 35 this year and bump them up? Because uh, that's going to increase the overall amount that you raise. Um, and then you just want to keep an eye on retention um, on the day of. So for instance, one thing that I like to recommend is that you keep an eye, you pull, you get a written email ready in whatever program you use, whether it's MailChimp, Constant Contact, or Autopilot Campaign Monitor, whatever you use. Get the email ready and that way you can just pull the list um, and plug it in and send it out to anybody who gave last year but has not given again this year. And that way you're doing some targeted outreach to those people to get them to come back and make another donation because um, really they already support you. You know that they already support you. So it's really not wise to forget about them or fail to reach out to them because you want to bring them back and get them making another donation to your campaign. Um, another thing that is important to include in your uh, giving day plan is follow up. You want to thank your donors. Um, so one of the things that's really interesting to me is that how quickly donors receive a sincere thank you from your nonprofit actually has a direct effect on whether or not that donor is likely to give again. Um, so we do have a thank you page on Mighty Cause that you can set up. And then we also allow you to um, include a thank you message in the receipt that we send them. It's kind of a transactional email from us that you can insert a message that acknowledges them. But we do recommend going above and beyond that um, to thank the donor. So whether that's giving them a phone call, um, sending them a personalized email, however you choose to stay in touch with your donors and thank them. Uh, it is important to create a plan to do that so that donors are properly thanked and acknowledged for their contributions. You don't need to give them a receipt, but we do recommend uh, doing a, a thank you email or phone call or however you choose to manage that. Um, you also want to close the loop with your donors. Um, so how much did you raise? Did you reach your goals? You want to, you know, close the loop with them so that they put, they can put a pin in this event and say, this is over. I've helped with this. And that way you can move on to your next event and your next fundraising initiative at your nonprofit. Um, one thing that is important is first time donors. So if you get a first time donor, what is the plan for them? How are you going to onboard them to your nonprofit? Do you have an email journey that they they'll get? Are they going to get a welcome packet in the mail? How do you, how are you going to welcome these new donors into your nonprofit and get them involved in your nonprofit on an ongoing basis? Um, and then you also just want to make sure that you include them in your year round fundraising efforts and communications. Um, so every donation is an opportunity for a lifelong donor. And the way that you make sure that you get those donors to come back time and time again and become tried and true supporters is by stewarding and communicating with those donors on a regular basis. So once the giving event's over, you've thanked everybody, you've closed the loop, uh, just make sure that you're engaging these donors on a regular basis um, and incorporating them in your year round fundraising strategy. And that's especially important if you fundraise off of Mighty Cause outside of Give 828. Um, just make sure that you are not siloing these donors on the Mighty Cause platform. Make sure that you're incorporating them in your year-round plans. 
And then finally, uh, reach out to Mighty Cost for support. If you have any questions, any technical questions, uh, we are here to help you. We will also be um, online dedicated to helping you out on the event day itself. So if you have a question, or even if a donor has a question, if somebody accidentally donates twice, um, you can direct them to our support team for assistance. Um, we also have a full support library at support.mightycause.com. So if you're the kind of person who really needs screenshots and a step-by-step -step instruction to do certain things, you can find that in our support library. Support at mightycause.com is our email address. Um, that's the fastest way to reach us. Um, outside of the event, uh, we are Monday through Friday, nine to five operation. We are on Eastern time. Obviously, we'll be online for the full duration of the event on August 28th. Um, and you can also give us a call if you're a phone call person. Our number is 202-800-1618. Um, and we're happy to walk you through anything that you need help with if you'd like to give us a call if you're somebody who really needs to talk it out. Um, so you can have you have multiple avenues to reach out for us so that hopefully you can get the support that you need leading up to the event if you need anything, any help with anything related to the Mighty Cause platform. All right, so that is it for the um, the presentation. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen if I. OK, so that way we can go through the Q&A. So if you have a question, if you wanted me to expand on anything that we were talking about during the presentation, um, just pop that question into the Q&A box and uh, we'll be happy to address it. If you have anything specific for Nema or Siobhan about YGBG, prizes, registration, et cetera, um, you can pop that into the question box as well. Um, so I wanted to make some time for questions. So. Um, don't be shy. You have a captive audience here and we're happy to answer um, any questions that you may have. So I will just give everybody a few minutes to answer, to type in any questions that they might have. Uh, Nema, Siobhan, did you have any um, anything you wanted to say or clarify um, on your end while we're waiting for people to ask their questions? Good afternoon, everyone. This is Siobhan. I am so happy and excited to be working with um, Young Black and Giving Back Institute this year. And I just wanted to let any of our participants know that registration, um, the process is moving along. We did get an influx of registration um, requests over the weekend. And so that's fantastic. So we are working towards getting those verified and approved. If you happen to receive a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, an, an email for more information, um, please, um, please get a chance to read it and reply within, um, I, I believe I'm asking for at least five business days so that we can get that turned around for you. And we may be asking for um, just some images for um, your board members or staff members um, so we can verify that process and that your organization is black led. Um, so that's a really important feature for this particular giving campaign. So if you do receive an email from us, um, please um, respond uh, within a timely manner so we can make sure you are registered and app approved and fully approved and so you can pay your registration fee. So um, if you have any questions, I'm certainly available for email um, or conversation, phone conversation if you need that and I will pop my information in the chat um, if you need me for anything in the future. <clears throat> Perfect. And so Siobhan, uh, we had a question from Anita. Um, she said she didn't receive any um, information to pay the registration fee. And where should she go to pay? Um, should they email you for a link to the to, to the payment form? Thank you um, for the question, Anita. I will double check. Your name is very familiar to me. So I'm going to look while, while I'm here online. I'm going to look over. Um, if you have not received um, an email from me with the link, then either you have not, I have not, <clears throat> excuse me, I have not received it or reviewed it. I'm sorry, I have not reviewed your registration. If you haven't gotten a link because you will either get a confirmation requesting more information for verification or you will get a denial or you will get that um, pending, uh, pending link, excuse me, pending and pending registration payment, I apologize. So those are the three courses of action. Um, so I will look while I'm here, but I also again pop my information and we can email and we can chat, um, but I will make sure we get you confirmed one way or another. <clears throat> 
Awesome. And I would always recommend if you can't find an email that you think you should have gotten, always check your spam folder. I have a problem where I email people and my emails end up there all the time, even though I'm not spamming them. So just make sure you check your spam folder as well. Um, all right, so uh, I don't see any new questions aside from that one. Um, if you have any questions, if you wanted to talk about matching grants, how to win prizes, um, now is your chance to really pick um, all of our brains about that information. So I'll give you just another moment to type in any questions that you may have. Um, and I do wanna just remind you that there's a really fantastic uh, toolkit that is available on the Give 828 website. Nema and Siobhan and Ebony and the whole team really pulled together some fantastic resources. Um, that you can use as you're getting ready for the campaign. Um, and there is a question from Ashonda, um, who chooses the leaderboard organizations? That's a really great question. So when you register for the event, um, you have a bunch of questions that you answer as part of the registration process. So basically we're looking at those answers to determine where you belong in terms of leaderboards. So as I mentioned, there were questions about whether or not your organization is located in Maryland or whether or not your organization um, deals with uh, Black maternal and reproductive health. Um, so we generally look at the registration form and do some data sorting and see who qualifies for those particular leaderboards. Um, the YBGB leaderboard is everybody who's registered and has paid their fee qualifies for that leaderboard. So if you are approved and you've paid your fee, um, then you are, you are on the YBGB leaderboard. If you don't fit into any other categories, then that will be your leaderboard, um, but it's the registration form. So if you think you may have um, given us incorrect information or you just want to make sure, you can always uh, reach out to the YBGB team or myself. My name is Linda and my email address is Linda at mightycause.com and we are happy to take a look for you and make sure that everything is correct in there according to what you tell us, um, but we're basically just at, you know looking at the registration form. All right, so there is another question from Martine. Uh, we participated last year. All of our data, our funds collected are still there. Do we need to delete 2020 stats or start a new one to start a new one for this year? That's a really great question. So on Mighty Cause, you have a couple of different types of pages. Your basic page is gonna be your nonprofit profile. That is your general nonprofit page. It's connected to your EIN, your tax exempt ID number um, with the IRS. And that's where you'll generally find all of your tools. That's where you find your dashboard. That one is sort of a life, it's an evergreen page. So it doesn't have a beginning and end point, um, but there are a few things that you can do to sort of get it ready for this year. Um, if you are in editing mode on your page, you can sort of reset your goal um, because if you were participating in 2020 and your goal was to raise $5,000 and you hit that goal, you don't want people to come to your page and think that you've already raised $5,000 and you've hit your goal. You wanna reset it for this year. So there's a little pencil icon that is the universal um, edit icon on Mighty Cause. You can just click that um, and you can readjust your goal. Um, and one thing that is um, helpful to do is there's a donor count on your page. It'll usually include by default um, the amount that you've raised and the number of donors who's, who've given to you. You can reset that. Um, and basically it's the same process when you see that like on your front page of your organization profile, when you see like you've raised this much from this number of donors or you see an old goal, you can just click the pencil icon to edit that. And what you'll wanna do to reset your count, your metrics on the page, um, is just adjust the date that it's counting from. Um, so you'll want to set that to August 14th, which is the day that early giving opens. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, we do actually have a walkthrough on the, uh, in our support library that will show you exactly where all of these things are. It's pretty intuitive. You just kind of find the thing that's incorrect and you click the pencil icon next to it. But if you need a walkthrough, um, if you go to support.mightycause.com and go to our support library, for nonprofits, there is something that says, how do I reset my metrics? And that will take you through that process. And I'll also just uh, make sure that that's uh, so accessible to you. So I'll either send it to Siobhan and Emma or make sure that it's somewhere on the um, Give 828 page, just so that you can easily reset that information. Now, if you're talking about like a 
an event page or a team page or a peer to peer fundraiser that is connected to your main organization profile. Um, we do recommend starting a new one for this year that is fresh for your new campaign. Um, those are typically you can sort of tell that they're more time sensitive campaign pages, um, but your organization profile is an evergreen page you just need to reset those couple of things. And if it's a you know peer to peer page, um, you'll probably just want to start a new one because frankly it's a little bit more complicated to erase things than it is to just start over again. Um, and our support team can help you out as well. So if you find yourself getting lost, just contact us at support at mightycause.com and we will help you out. All right, so I think that that is all of the questions we have. I see Siobhan in there um, talking to everybody. Um, so we are all available to you, the whole team, Nema, Siobhan, myself. If you have any follow-up questions from this webinar, we have been recording this whole time. So if you need to review any parts or you wanna share it with a colleague, um, we will have it posted on the give828.org site as soon as I'm able to upload it to YouTube. Sometimes it takes a little while, YouTube's kind of slow, but we'll get that up as soon as possible and make sure that everybody has access to it. And again, if you missed the first webinar, which was really kind of technical about your profile, um, you can go back to the training webinars page on give828.org and you can watch that webinar as well. Um, if you wanted to get a refresh or an intro to how to customize your page and some of the tools that are available to you. So I think we'll call it quit, quits for today. Thank you all so much for your excellent questions. Thanks to Nema and Siobhan for joining us for the Q&A. Um, and I think this is our last, this is our last webinar from Mighty Cause. So I'm excited to see what everybody does on August 28th. Um, and happy fundraising. We're here to support you. So just reach out to Mighty Cause if you need anything leading up to the event. All right. Thank you and happy fundraising. I think we have one more question. Linda, oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it just came in the Q&A box. I think that just came through. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, there it is. Let's see. Um, if I reset metrics for this year, will donors from 2020 still be counted as unique donors for this year? That's a really good question. Will resetting metrics delete 2022 donors? Um, so it won't delete any donors. So basically on your donation report, you will be able to access a full history of anybody who's ever given to your page uh, through the Mighty Cost platform. So you have a full list of donors. You may just need to adjust the date in your donation report, but don't be afraid. You're just changing the display on the front of your page. You're not deleting anybody. We're not going to do that to you. We would never you know, get rid of any donor data that is yours and it's kind of stored um, in perpetuity on Mighty Cause. So it doesn't delete any donors. Um, and unique donors are actually um, count. So it's a little bit complicated during the day itself. Every Everybody who makes a donation is a unique donor. So every person during the event is going to be a unique donor. Your page itself is counting your donors from like the lifetime of your page. So if you claimed your Mighty Cause page in 2019, um, you, it's going to be a record of everybody who's ever given to your page. But in terms of golden tickets and power hours, unique donors are unique within the space of the hour. So there's kind of a few different things that we're looking at here. When it comes to prizes, the hourly prizes, you only need to worry about donors within the space of that hour because we're just looking to make sure that they are unique within the space of that particular hour. Um, and it, if somebody is given to you in the past, um, on your organization page, they may not be listed as a unique donor, but if they are unique within the giving period of the giving event, they will be unique. So the giving event is kind of its own liminal space <laughs> where everybody is unique the first time they give um, and everybody is also unique the first time they give during a prize hour. Um, so that's a little bit complicated and I feel like I just made it a little bit more confusing. Um, but on your page, you're not getting rid of any donors. Um, if somebody's already given to your page before, but they haven't given for this year's event, they will still be a unique donor for Give 828 in 2021. Um, even if they gave in 2020, even if they gave in 2019. Um, so the giving event itself kind of starts on August 14th and it goes through August 28th. And anybody who gives during that space is a unique donor 
even if they've given to your nonprofit in years past. And then for prizes, they only need to be unique during that hour. So you don't have to get a hundred brand new people who've never given to your organization before to donate. Um, that would be a wild thing to ask anybody to do. So they just need to be unique within the space of that hour for the purposes of prizes. So did that make sense, Siobhan and Nema? <laughs> Just want to make sure that, that that made sense. That was helpful for me to know, but yes, I, I thought that made perfect sense. Okay, perfect. I'm glad. I was a little bit worried as I went through there. All right, so I think that's it for today. We're already over our time, so I want to make sure that everybody can finish out their day. It's 4.05 here. Um, I will make the sure that this recording is available to you on the Give 828 site. Um, so again, Hap, thank you so much for joining us today, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody achieves on August 28th.